What's up, YouTube? This is Ryan from Annihilator MTG here, and I'm back again with some more Modern. This week, we're going to be kicking back a little. I've been way too busy as of late, so I figured I would play a deck that used to be my bread and butter, and that deck is Ad Nauseam. Now, before you throw things at me, I'm honestly quite interested in seeing what this deck looks like post Simeon Spirit Guide ban. Almost everyone considered this deck to be dead afterwards, and yet that doesn't seem to be the case at all. So let's break it down. Without Simeon Spirit Guide, this deck is now entirely relying on Thassa's Oracle to win the game. For those of of you who are unaware, the combo goes something like this. First, we use a defensive spell like Angel's Grace to ensure that we don't die. From there, we can cast Spoils of the Vault, specifically naming a card that we aren't using. This will exile our entire deck. Finally, we cast Thassa's Oracle, and so long as it resolves, the triggered ability will almost always win us the game. Now, of course, we're still including the aforementioned Ad Nauseam, but more as a singleton inclusion similarly to what you would see in Legacy. So the big question at this point is what keeps this deck from being wildly inconsistent? The answer to that is twofold. First and foremost, we're still including a good amount of cantrips, those being Serum Visions and Sleight of Hand respectively. The second, however, is much more interesting. Thanks to Modern Horizons 2, we can seamlessly include Profane Tutor in our lineup. This isn't the best tutor in the world, but if you can suspend it on turn 2, it is absolutely incredible. Last but not least, one of the coolest new inclusions is, of course, Thought Seize. With this card in the tried and true Pact of Negation, we do a really excellent job of paving the way for our combo. And honestly, we kind of need it, because as you can imagine, Teferi is so miserable to play against. With that said, I'm excited to see what this deck can do, so let's hop into the first match and see how it goes. Alrighty, looks like we found our opponent. Best of luck to you, my friend. And this hand is quite excellent. Definitely keeping this. Let's start things off with a pathway, then we'll cast a Thought Seize. Ooh, okay, we're playing against Burn. Them having Searing Blaze is really good for us. It's essentially a dead card. Lava Spike is likely not worth taking, and to a lesser extent, neither is Flame Rift. So that leaves Goblin Guide and Eidolon. Despite Eidolon being utterly terrifying, I think we have to take the Goblin. On their side, they play in Crack and Arid Mesa, grabbing an untap Sacred Foundry, then they cast a Lava Spike, bringing our life total down to 15, and that appears to be it. Drawing another pathway, this time we'll play the blue side. I think we'll cast Sleight of Hand, just so we can dig a little deeper. We see a Profane Tutor and a Pentad Prism. Let's take the Tutor, and now we'll wait. Up next, they untap and play a Fiery Islet. Here comes the Eidolon. If we lose this game, it'll likely be because of this card. With that said, I still stand by my choice of taking the Goblin. Either way, we draw Sea Chrome Coast, might as well play it. Then we'll suspend Profane Tutor. This part is a little risky, but I think we'll cast the Serum Visions as well. Drawing a land and seeing two very underwhelming cards, let's go bottom bottom. They play their second Horizon land, followed by a suspended Rift Bolt as they attack us for two. We're at 11. After damage, they cast a Flame Rift. Wow, when we draw Phyrexian on life, that's just incredible. They are not gonna like this. So let's play our Gemstone Mine and then cast the Unlife, taking two damage in the process. The funny thing about this situation is their Eidolon is eventually going to lock them out of casting spells, so even if we didn't have the tutor, we'd have a ton of time. Their Rift Bolt comes off Suspend, hitting us for three, then they suspend another one as they attack with the Eidolon. We're at zero. On our upkeep, the Profane Tutor comes off Suspend. Let's cast it. We'll no doubt be grabbing the Thassa's Oracle. Let's get things started by playing a Mine, then just for fun, we'll cast the Angel's Grace. It is worth noting that we really don't need to cast this. Then we'll jam the Spoils, naming Uncle Istvan. Since that card isn't in our deck, the whole thing will be exiled. Finally, we'll cast our Thassa's Oracle. The trigger goes on the stack. Before it resolves, they cast a Searing Blaze. That won't do much. And we got the win. Nice. So in this matchup, we can be pretty aggressive with our sideboarding. We'll be cutting both Pact of Negation and Thought Seize. That way we can bring in three copies of Spell Pierce, two Prismatic Endings, and a single copy of Echoing Truth. Yep, looks good to me. Alright, so while this hand doesn't have any direct combo pieces, I think it's probably good enough to keep they get things rolling with an Arid Mesa, which they crack for a Sacred Foundry. Then they suspend a Rift Bolt. No turn one creature is a huge win for us. We draw a Lotus Bloom. Excellent. Let's suspend it. Then we'll jam the island and hold up the Spell Pierce. Their Rift Bolt comes off suspend. Whoops, we kind of clicked through that one. Here's hoping they have another non-creature spell. They play a Horizon Land, and they do, as they cast a Lava Spike. Here comes the Spell Pierce. That leaves us at 17 all, with them only having three cards left in hand. Drawing a Redundant Profane 
Brain Tutor, let's play our basic Swamp, then we'll suspend one of them. Between the Lotus Bloom, the Tutor, and their hand size, we likely have this one in the bag. Up next, they play a Scalding Tarn into a Sorcery Speed Lightning Bolt, followed by a Skewer the Critics, makes sense, we're at 11. We draw an Ad Nauseum. Casting a Cantrip is an option, but I think we should just suspend the second Profane Tutor. On our end step, they crack their fetch for a Sacred Foundry, then during their main phase, they cast a Lava Spike, and that appears to be it. So now we get to cast both our Profane Tutor and our Lotus Bloom. First things first, let's tutor. Grabbing a copy of Phyrexia Nunlife, then the Lotus Bloom resolves. Drawing a Sleight of Hand, let's cast one of them. Think we'll take the Dark Slick Shores, then jam it immediately. This time casting our Serum Visions, hitting another copy, and seeing a Thassa's Oracle. Excellent. We'll go bottom top. Finally, we'll cash in the Lotus Bloom and jam the Unlife. During our end step, they activate their Horizon Land. Here comes a creature. It's a little late, but they'll attack us for one, followed by a Skewer the Critics, taking us down to four. Oh right, we forgot about the Profane Tutor shuffling our deck, so there goes the Oracle, I guess. Think we'll just grab a Spoils in the meantime, as we draw a Pentad Prism. Let's cast our Sleight of Hand, seeing an Unlife and a City of Brass. Might as well take the land, then play it immediately. Given how comfortable we are, I think we can just Prismatic Ending their dude, then cast a Serum Visions. We draw a Lotus Bloom, but more importantly, we see some Spoils. Excellent. So now we'll just suspend the Lotus and send it back. On their turn, they cast a Sorcery Speed Boros Charm. Gotta love their determination. Hitting a Spoils, we'll cast the first one, naming Thassa's Oracle, then the second one, naming Uncle Istvan, casting the Oracle, and that'll do it. GG's opponent. Okay, looks like we found our opponent. Best of luck to you, my friend. And this hand will work. We'll start things off with a basic island and cast our Serum Visions, seeing a Phyrexian Unlife and a Lotus Bloom, neither of which are immediate mana sources, so we can't keep those. Finally, we'll suspend our existing Lotus Bloom and see what they got. They get things rolling with a Windswept Heath, which they crack for a Temple Garden. Then they evoke a copy of Fury, have to assume they're going to cast Ephemerate, and they do. This gives them a ton of power very early. We unfortunately draw Pact of Negation, Let's cast the second Serum Visions, hitting a Pentad Prism, seeing another Pact of Negation and a land. Let's go bottom top. On their turn, they play a tapped breeding pool, then attack us for six. That leaves us at 14. Drawing the land, let's jam it, then we'll suspend a profane tutor. If Fury remains their only creature, we have a chance, but otherwise we're toast. Up next, they untap and cast a Utopia Sprawl, then attack us for six once again. We're at eight. That appears to be all they have, as our Lotus Bloom comes off suspend. Then we draw Sea Chrome Coast. Let's cast the Pentad Prism, and honestly, our situation looks really good right now. During our end step, they evoke a Solitude, then cast an Ephemerate. If we respond to this, I'm pretty sure we win. Let's cast the Pact. The Ephemerate fizzles, and now the Solitude will die. So what was that, like a 3 for 1? Here's hoping they don't draw something good. It's a Risen Reef, that's totally fine. They attack us for a third time, bringing our life total down to 2. Okay, let's get down to business. We'll stack the triggers and resolve our Tutor, grabbing a Thassa's Oracle. Then in response to the Pact of Negation, we'll cast Angel's Grace, enabling us to ignore the Pact all together. Wow, and we just draw another oracle? That's funny. Either way, we'll cast the Spoils of the Vault, naming Uncle Istvan. Since that card isn't in our deck, the whole thing gets exiled. Finally, we'll jam an oracle, and we got the win. We're going to do a little improvisation with the sideboarding. We'll start by cutting the Thought Seizes, that way we can make room for two Echoing Truths and the final Pact of Negation. Cutting Thought Seize is risky, especially considering they likely have to ferry. However, Thought Seize would have been dead to us last game, so let's see what happens. Don't think we'll be keeping a no-lander. This'll work. Let's ship the mine. They start things off with a Temple Garden and cast a Utopia Sprawl. We draw a redundant copy of Oracle. Let's play the Sea Chrome Coast, then jam Sleight of Hand. Seeing a Lotus and a Serum Visions. We'll take the Lotus, then suspend it immediately, and we'll pass. They play and crack a Flooded Strand, finding themselves a Breeding Pool. Yup, and our worst fears are realized. That's a Teferi. They can safely down-tick due to our lack of damage. Drawing a Prism, that's actually not bad. Let's play the Pathway, then we'll cast it. So oddly enough, if we find an Angel's Grace, we just win. We can't tutor for it or anything, but a top deck would do the job. Up next, they uptick their Teferi, then cast another Utopia Sprawl. Wow, and they even have a Prismatic Ending? So much for that. We draw a Pact, and I think we've seen enough. 
Okay, so that was bad. It appears that the only way to navigate this matchup is to assume that Teferi is going to show up, and that demands answers. So I think we'll trim on the Echoing Truths and a copy of Pentad Prism. That way we can bring back the three copies of Thoughtseize. Answering Teferi proactively really seems to be the best course of action, especially given his static ability. Yep, looks good to me. With two cantrips and some hand attack, this is likely good enough. Let's play the Seachrome Coast, then cast Serum Visions number one, drawing a Spoils and seeing another one, along with a Pathway, going bottom top, and that'll be it. They lead off with an untapped stomping ground into Eutopia Sprawl. I've seen this one before. We draw the pathway, let's play it, then we'll cast our Thought Seize. So in this situation, I think we should just take the Force. There's some annoying redundancy between the Prismatic Ending and Foundation Breaker, so taking one of those would just make the remaining one the de facto answer. Finally, we'll cast Serum Visions number two, drawing an Ad Nauseum. Let's go top, top. They play a Windswept Heath, which they crack immediately, this time finding a Triome. Then they cast the Harbinger, tutoring for a Risen Reef. Drawing our land, let's play it. Then we'll suspend Profane Tutor and send it back. Up next, they play a Basic Plains and cast Risen Reef. At this point, anything that isn't Teferi is fine by me. Attacking is for one, we're at 17. We draw the Serum Visions, let's cast it. Drawing pack number two, and once again seeing Cantrip plus land. I guess we'll just go bottom top. There's no point in casting the Pentad Prism if they're just going to destroy it with their Foundation Breaker or prismatic ending, so that'll be it. Before anything else, they attack us for two, taking our life total down to 15. Aw, oh, come on, they cast another Teferi? Alright, guess we have to counter it with Pact of Negation. Then they evoke a Foundation Breaker, jamming a Cavern in the process. It dies. So we'll stack the triggers accordingly, that way we can find an Angel's Grace. Then cast it so we don't lose, drawing a Lotus Bloom. Let's suspend it. Since they wasted their Foundation Breaker, I guess we just gotta bait out the prismatic ending with our Pentad Prism. Things aren't looking good, gotta be honest. No way, they untap and cast another Teferi. If they didn't have a way to answer Pentad Prism, we could go runner runner, but without that, there's really no chance. Oh well, GG's opponent. Alrighty, looks like we found our opponent. Best of luck to you, my friend. And wow, this hand is incredible. Definitely keeping this one. They get things rolling with a tapped artifact land. So unless I'm mistaken, this should be an affinity list, like the actual keyword affinity. Either way, we draw Sea Chrome Coast. Let's lead off with a rainbow land. Then we'll cast our thought seas. Oh wow, and this hand is not good. I guess we should just take their thought cast. Up next, they jam a treasure vault and cast a springleaf drum, followed by an expedition map. That'll be for Urza's Saga although it is a bit slow here. Keeping things rolling as they cast a Memnite and use that to play their second Springleaf Drum. Drawing an island, no worries. Let's play a Sea Chrome Coast, and now we just gotta wait. On their main phase, they cash in their map, no doubt searching for the Saga. Yes, indeed. Then they attack us for one, we're at 16. Ooh, and they cast a Pithing Needle, that's unexpected. Not entirely sure we're worried about it, but let's see what they name. They go for the Wishclaw Talisman, that's not gonna do much. We draw another Oracle, let's play Sea Chrome Coast number two, and since we have it, we might as well cast the extra oracle. Seeing even more mana, thank goodness they don't have any hand attack. They uptick their saga, only to play another artifact land and nothing else. Okay, so let's get started. We'll play the mine, then cast our angel's grace, followed by the spoils, naming Uncle Istvan. Because that isn't in our deck, everything will get exiled. Then we'll jam our second oracle, and that'll do it. The important thing about this match is to avoid getting overconfident. Fact of the matter is, they can get in for damage, and if we top deck air, they'll just win. So with that in mind, I think we'll cut three copies of Thought Seize and a single Pact of Negation. That way we can bring in two Slaughter Packs and two copies of Echoing Truth. And the reason we aren't taking out more Pact of Negations is due to their blue splash. Looks good to me. Oh nice, this hand is also quite excellent. This time around, they start off a little hotter with a Nurse's Saga, then they cast a Springleaf Drum. Getting those counters early is going to be huge followed by a Memnite, then an Ornithopter, and they send it back. We draw Phyrexian Unlife, always happy to see that. Let's play the Seachrome Coast, then we'll cast our Serum Visions, drawing a Spoils, and even seeing another Oracle. We can probably keep that on top, just in case. On their main phase, they uptick their Saga, then they play a Darksteel Citadel, attacking us with their Memnite, that leaves us at 19. We draw the Oracle, let's play our Pathway, then I guess we'll just hold up the Echoing Truth. During our end step, they make a Construct, then weirdly 
Oddly enough, on their turn, they just float some mana and let the final portion of the saga resolve. Would have expected another token, but maybe they know about Echoing Truth? Either way, they play a Thought Monitor, here comes the value, make that two, then they cast an Expedition Map into a Shadow Spear. I can see how certain decks might actually struggle with this. As they attack us for ten, no reason to let that happen, so we'll cast the Echoing Truth. We draw another land. At this point, it's probably best just to jam the island and then cast Phyrexian Unlife. This gives us some buffer and allows us to combo off with one less mana if we need to. Up next, they play a very affordable Thought Cast. Then we see a Frogmite, which they tap for another Thought Cast. Wow. Followed by an Ornithopter. They swing in for five, taking us down to 14. Don't really think we need a third Oracle, but let's do this. We'll cast the Spoils, naming Uncle Istvan. This exiles everything. Finally casting a Thassa's Oracle, and that'll do it. GG's opponent. And there you have it. While Ad Nauseam might not be the same as it used to be, that difference isn't really indicative of a downgrade, rather a lateral change, which is actually quite interesting. I feel like this list could be tuned a bit, but other than that, so long as you know what you're doing, it'll serve you well. On to the subject of the modern metagame, I'm curious about the community's opinion on where things stand. For me, it's a bit mixed. On one hand, there's a lot of good out there, but on the other, things do seem to be a tad bit repetitive, especially when it comes to the various Luris builds. But by all means, let me know in the comments what you think and what decks have been keeping you entertained. I want to apologize if my energy was a bit low this week. Truth be told, I don't feel that great and it made working on the video a lot harder than I thought it would be. I might be coming down with something, but who knows. Either way, I want to thank each and every one of you for your patience and support. The fact that I've gotten this far is all thanks to you. Speaking of which, if you like my content, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. This stuff really does help, so thank you, and as always, stay safe out there and have a good one.